Hey there, Joel here from cosignsound.com.au. Thanks for joining me today. So in this video, um, I'd like to focus on additive synthesis. Uh, a really simple example uh, we'll look at is the black turn bird that we synthesized in the bird sounds video. So this was the first one we looked at. And I'd like to do uh, a bit more of a thorough demonstration of that. So here we'll look a bit closer at how to synthesize the harmonics individually. So here is the sample again. This is the recording from Aversoft. If you watched the previous video, you would have noticed I only used um, two wavetables. So that was the first tweet and the oh, the next tweet actually so one and two so they both sound quite different um, and the synth sample we basically morphed between these two wavetables um, as we pleased so here we go Now, as I said, we're going to run through this again. So what I'm going to do is just uh, go back to the original sample. Now, additive synthesis is a method of basically combining all the harmonics in a sample. Um, at first identifying the harmonics and then um, combining them all together and harmonics are basically sine waves so if we look at uh, the spectrum of that black turn sound in the previous video uh, the first tweet has uh, nine harmonics and then the second wavetable has I actually reduced the number, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, going back to the sample, if we focus on the harmonics, you can see the main body of the sound um, does reflect that. And in a later video, I'll look closer at the more complex area of the sound there, but for the most part, additive synthesis is looking at the fundamental tone of the sound via identifying the harmonics. So, the way I like to do this is, and there are a number of ways, but I basically find an accurate representation of the harmonics so I can clearly see them, and then I select that portion uh, or I can just select a, a clear portion of the sound that is isolated uh, well from the neighboring uh, texture. So for example, if I selected here, it wouldn't be as accurate. Now the reason is, is because I use the two-dimensional spectrum because um, it helps me look at the it looks helps me look more closer at the decibel reading. So, if I was to position the playhead here, we'll get this reading. But obviously, a more isolated point, we get a a very clear graph of the harmonics. Remember, we've got about 140 dB of dynamic range here. So you can see that the most essential reading that we'll look at is above, about here at above 68 dB. So if I zoom in uh, to 68 dB, and so I'll put that at the bottom, uh, that's pretty much what we'd like to focus on. 
Now, I can also zoom in horizontally. And as I said before, I'll look uh, at some techniques for using spectrograms. But here is uh, the settings. So I've used a FFT size of 2048 samples. And it's it helps to really uh, change these up to determine what works. But 2000 at the moment is uh, very helpful at positioning and at identifying each of these frequencies. So a handy tip is that if we hover the mouse over, we'll see that the base frequency is 1122 hertz, which approximates to C sharp 6 plus 20 cents of tuning. And the way we can tell that these are harmonics is that the second will should be C sharp 7 or double the previous frequency, which is 20, now 2243 hertz. The third is going to be a odd number, so that's if uh, in the top right hand corner we can see that's 3369 hertz. And this one is uh, 44,096, which is the third even harmonic, or the fourth harmonic, and so on. So now, so here's absinthe, and we've got a plot here. We've confirmed the series of harmonics, um, because they are in fact, integer harmonics, for example, one and then second integer, third integer, and so on. If we start again, uh, the root note, we can now try a different technique of setting it to the root uh, frequency, which is 1122. And then that is at negative 49 dB. Now down the bottom there is a reading on that. Negative 49, harmonic 1. Uh, harmonic 2 is uh, negative 34.21. There we go, negative 34. Negative 22.86 is harmonic 3. So we'll say 23. And then harmonic 4 is negative 14.23. We'll go with negative 14. Harmonic 5 is 34.3 negative, so negative 34.3. Uh, now, it doesn't have to be this precise, but I mean, I'm just taking advantage of it, the fact that this spectrum is incredibly uh, accurate. Harmonic... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is negative 24.03. Harmonic 7 is negative 33.89, so we'll go negative 34 again. Next one, forty negative forty three point six. Uh, that'll do. Um, and the top one is negative fifty four point five two. So, interestingly, the original recording of this. 
if I just neutralize this graph, the original recording, I think, had the Nyquist frequency at uh, 11K. So the other, the upper harmonics actually weren't recorded, but generally speaking, the harmonics themselves, the lower harmonics, like the bottom 20, especially according to Fred Welsh, uh, is, are the most important harmonics to look at in a sound. And uh, I believe this is partly due to our the, our ears, how they recognize pitches more accurately in the middle to low range. Uh, and the higher the harmonics are, the less um, likely we are able to distinguish the pitch. So having, you know, the top uh, eight or nine harmonics is quite, uh, quite handy, especially in this case where it's a bird sound and the bird sound starts at 1K. So this is a pretty good example. Now let's hear the sound that we have. So there's our synthesized version. The very beginning of the sound is the most accurate part at the moment. So you, if you remember the numbers, there's 1,122 hertz, C sharp 6, and also the uh, corresponding amplitudes. If we jump back to the uh, sample, uh, similar, this is in a similar position on the map at the moment, but as you can see, very pretty much the same, uh, just different amplitudes and slightly different um, positions in the sample, uh, obviously. But it's fundamentally, that's the result. now D7, and instead of C-sharp, it's now D7. So there's the semitone offset on that um, sound, so that's slightly higher note. It's a semitone higher, and it's also... The first harmonic is completely gone, almost. It's vanished into the noisy part of the signal, so... As we illustrated in the previous bird synthesis video, uh, bird synthesis techniques, the second tweet is tuned upward by a semitone while still referencing the same fundamental frequency at one kilohertz. However, the fundamental and third harmonic are missing. The integers should now reflect this. So there's one cool technique we can use um, also is to just go to composite view here. If we press this arrow in Isotope RX6, uh, it combines the samples. Um, basically, it just mixes them together. Now you can pretty much compare them side by side. Uh, you can see I've got the duration and the harmonic content accurate. Um, if we do this, we'll play these two. Actually, 
I'm able to select uh, some harmonics. If I just paint a uh, selection, yeah, you hold command to resize that. So if I just paint over the position there, uh, what's the position at the moment? So down in the bottom right hand side of the screen, it tells me where my cursor is positioned and it's now at 1122 hertz. So I'm just going to draw a line there. Now because I know that's the first harmonic, I can actually select the whole series of harmonics now. And now it's selected all the harmonics which are mathematically correspondent to that sample. And I'm just going to play that. Now I just want to boost the amplitude just for fun. So let's go to gain, gain that 6 dBs. Now, uh, pretty much, pretty close as far as uh, loudness. <laughs> okay. Um, I hope that makes sense. And uh, yeah, additive synthesis is a great way to really um, map out the main body of the sound, but as you get better at um, synthesizing sounds, you'll be able to affect the start and the end of the sound as well and add any other nuances to the sound um, to make it more convincing. Because sounds are very much more complex than just a series of harmonics and sometimes they contain odd numbers and uh, inharmonic overtones and noisy aspects and so on. So that concludes the video on additive synthesis with the black turn. I hope you found this video helpful. In the next video, I will look closer at tips to use the spectrogram more effectively. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe with a bell to stay updated. And we'll see you next time.